All right, guys. Getting ready. Just putting the finishing touches up here on the hoses and uh, buttoning everything up. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get a few of these things done. And then uh, you guys can watch me slap the engine in. So I like to make sure that uh, I get all these spots that could potentially be rub spots taken care of with wire loom. It's just a little little extra precaution like that. You know, anywhere, like I'm getting ready to put the last one on right here. So I got one on here because it's gonna go underneath the steering shaft. Um, I got one on the corner of the fuel line right here going from the tank around the bottom of the air box. And it also has the potential to rub on the corner of the air box and the, the steering shaft. Uh, this one, like I said, is going under there. And then um, I got the whole oil line covered. And then um, the last thing is going to be this little spot right here. So I like to tie my stuff up. That way there's no worry about it. Lasts a long time. Just lowers the, the uh, chances of failure of uh you know fuel delivery or starting a fire i mean that's a big one you, know, you get a gas leak like that and it's always potential to start a fire i don't want to do that so just make a little extra precaution or take a little extra uh, precautionary steps and you're good to go less worry less maintenance it's like it's almost like insurance i might actually put one right here too And you don't need to put it every square inch you can, but you know, anywhere there's potential where it might rub. So, and then I'll just uh, zing a couple zip ties over it. Got a storm coming this weekend finally, but we are going to head up north. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get the 800 done in time though. I've even done the same thing with uh, cooling hoses. Those were already on there. But I've gone as far as, like on my 700, the, the coolant, the outlet from the engine goes under the front mag side motor mount there. And it rubs on one, like it touches on one spot. So I put like a big, I cut an old radiator hose and just wrapped it. So I mean, you know, it's quarter inch thick of rubber just right over it. And then hit it with a couple of, like, put like three or four zip ties. And yeah, you don't have to worry about it. And when good old Menards went and picked up a bag of hose clamps, eight bucks for 10. And then I got the fuel filter. It's going to strap right up there. That way I can see it. Thought about going with clear clear fuel lines like Tigon or something. But, well, that stuff's yellow. But I figured, you know, with this clear fuel line, I'll be able to, or clear fuel filter. Which I really like. Those are like 12 bucks. And they I've been using them for a couple years now. They'd be pretty good. I'll be able to see any, I'll be able to see the fuel flow coming through there. So it'd be good to go either way. And then we got this guy wraps around here. And then obviously the carburetors, boom. It's getting close, getting close. So that is just about it. All right, I'm gonna go get the engine. All right. Now I end up putting, it's just a four by four, wrap it in a towel, that way I can set it up here, get the hoses in place, and then I can, the front motor mounts will be sitting right here so I can just lift it up and bang.
All right, guys, I just wanted to get the, the nuts and bolts situation figured out here. Okay, so I had inch and a quarter. They were a little bit too long. So I got seven eighths. And then I also got three quarter. So, oh yeah, and then I had to get this guy. <laughs> Which is a half inch, half inch, uh, 24 or something like that. So, I am going to go grab the engine. I'll be right back. All right. I almost crushed my wallet here. Let's see, can't really show you a whole lot. Um, sideways we can go with this thing. Gotta have room for tools. Oh jeez, that scared the crap out of me. Thought it was gonna tumble. So what I'm going to do, I want to get this oil line off that feeds the fuel pump. This, I'm going to fill this with oil. So I'm just going to use this and inject oil into it. Yeah, so that neighbor across the street, gosh, I like to back my truck in because it's, you know, it's less to have to worry about backing in than backing out. Sounds stupid, but, you know, that's just the way I look at it. <laughs> so I back in every day. I put a leveling kit on my truck and at first the uh, the headlights were They were high, you know, because I didn't readjust them. So when you level the front end, it just makes them up higher. So I had them like that for a while. So when I back in it would He keeps his drapes open at night in the evening hours and so when it would um, so when I would back in, it would shine to like the bottom of his window. And then when I would hit the alarm button, it would flash. And he mentioned it a couple times. And I was like, all right, you know, he just needs something he noticed. You know, I'm the same way. But long story short, like a month and a half ago, he complained about it and sent me a text and said, just so you know, blah, blah, blah. I can see every time you pull in, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, well... You know, I like back in my driveway, you know, I know that I need to readjust my, my lights. Can, you know, you could probably just close your drapes at night. Why does somebody have their their drapes wide open to begin with in the middle of the night? You know, or in the evening hours? I don't know. He watches TV. Um, so anyways, I said, you know, is there any way you could just close your drapes? You know, we're on a friend, I thought we were on a friendship basis. And I said, come on, man, why don't you just close your drapes? LOL. And uh, he goes, why don't you point your headlights to your driveway or to your, in, at your garage? And I said, well, because isn't this America? You know, don't we live in the land of the free to back your truck up in your driveway? <laughs> and I laughed. I put that all out. Well, he didn't like that because he said, yeah, this is America. And then I said, well, you know, the land of the free to back you to back your truck up in your driveway. And uh, so, like I said, he didn't like that. And then uh, just ends up getting all bent out of shape about it. And so I, they were doing, somebody pulled out in front of the, the neighbor's house on my side of the street. And they were doing something with the, the water valves there. So I, he, I saw him go out there and I sent him a text. I go, hey, what's going on over there? And he goes, they're trying to find the water valve that's underneath the root. And he goes, by the way, who is this? I was like, are you freaking serious? 
So he ends up deleting my number out of his phone because he got so mad at me. And this was after, in between there, so after he gave me a bunch of trouble about the headlights, or about me backing in the driveway, a couple weeks later, I ended up uh, telling him, I said, hey, just so you know, I ended up uh, readjusting my headlights, and you're supposed to stand, you know, go park up against like 25 feet from a wall, and then they're supposed to be down like three inches below of where the center of the light is on the wall at, from 25 feet. So I readjust and I'm told him that and he goes, okay. And I go, I just backed my driveway and it's a lot lower now. And he goes, okay. So I don't know if he deleted my number after that or what, but gosh, guy's like 60 years old. And he said, by the way, who is this? And I go, are you trying to tell me that you just deleted my number and deleted me out of your life like that? And he was like, well, I didn't like your comment. Uh, and I was like, I didn't even respond to him. I was like, whatever. But good grief, people. Serious? All right, so I don't have to make a very long uh, pulse line here. If I didn't have these sandblasters over here, this would be a lot easier for you guys to get up in here. But oh, that's just not the case. Screw with mom. Got a big butter in her. I think that'll work. So, yeah, that's what I deal with around here. Fun stuff. Can't win. It's kind of tight in here, I will admit that. Yeah, these are from Menards. They're pretty nice. Good quality. Quarter inch nuts on them. So my little trick here is to blow in the end of this. oil in your lips no big deal and it comes down quick enough to where you empty the tube by blowing air into it and then it's gravity fed so by the time you get it from here down and you start pushing it on the oils right there so you don't have to worry about bleeding the pump or anything it's little tricks little tricks that's what it's all about little tricks Son of a biscuit. There we go. Alright. So that we are going to do. Just tried to crush my hand. You know what? Let me get an extension. There we go. That's not an extension. That's an extension. Crocodile Dundee. Why well, do you guys know the movie? Alright. So that's all I was doing, is just tightening up that guy right there. Just like that. Tight space. But, making ground. So the next thing is the pulse line. Alright, so this is where I'm at. Just got that oil tube on. Now I'm going to try and squeeze my hand in there. Oh, good grief. Ooh. Oh, there we go. I like to put two just to make sure. Mm. I like to be redundant, I guess. 
is the correct term. At least with stuff like this. Let's get a fatty on here. This is tight, just like the 700 was. That's not in there, right? Well, that might be too big. It's just enough, really, to squeeze this little spot right there that should be good two okay so got that guy in here this is the oil injection line or well, cable that's what pulls up on the uh, arm there okay <clears throat> so you want to make sure that when that's all the way down there's a line on the housing and when the arm comes up and then you release it you want those two lines to line up and so I preset that so Once you get this in here, you want to get the cable for the injection oil pump arm. You want the fuel from the tank to the inlet. And I have this coming out of the tank. And then I got it going up around here to my fuel filter. That way it's an easy access, easy access. And then it goes back around under the steering shaft and into the fuel pump. <clears throat> well, the oil injection line. So the blue one, that's the injection oil. So it comes out of the pump, oil injection pump, and then goes into the fuel pump here. And then this is the pulse line that goes to the crankcase. So when a two-stroke goes around, 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 it creates a negative positive pressure, and that pumps a diaphragm, pumps the fuel from the tank here. Oh, and then uh, the line from the bottom of the fuel pump is down there. That goes up. And around so that's gonna go up over the carburetors is how I'm gonna I'm gonna have it up around the carburetors and down through the center to that tube next thing I need to do is go grab the carburetors and stick those in and that will be next so I will... all right got a bowl of premix here a couple of shots into the main supply line So this is all I'm doing. That's just pre-filling the bowls because it's not like the, flush, the, the round slides are easier because you can just fill the bowl prior to assembling it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to test fit these. <clears throat> Okay, so we're going to try and fit these and then see if I have enough room afterwards to tighten stuff up. And if not, we'll just have to pop them out. So that will give me a gauge of how long I need the middle cable, or the middle supply tube here. It's pretty close. Could probably nip a little bit off. Let's go inch by inch. Uh, that's about an inch right there. Let's go inch and a half. 
very, very careful when cutting with a sharp razor. Okay. So that's where that will be. And then it's going to go down a little bit more. Yeah, that might be good right there. I'll tell you the truth. Let's grab another trusty hose clamp. You know what I might do? Before I do that, get the choke cables ready to go. Getting ready to fall. I don't want to do that. I might undo these. Get these out of the way. We'll leave it undone for now. Now let's see if I can get those in there. Mm. I think I'd have more room if I pulled them out. I mean, for sure, obviously, but I, mean, I can only pull it out so far. So we're going to get this out of the way again. I'm going to pop the carbs off. So all I'm doing is just preparing these. Just gonna hit these with little two strokes. Two stroke all. There's one. Take these up because they kept falling off. There's two. Only I was supposed to be able to get these in here easier. This is a 12 millimeter, I believe. Oh, it's not. This one's bigger. Interesting. Okay, folks, we're at a 14 millimeter. So you just want to snug it up. You want to crank on it. Almost there. You know, I could probably put the fuel on down while I'm right here. Put it on to where it's easily accessible. You don't want it on like this because then you have to twist it. It's going to be more of an angle. So if you got it on the outside like this, you'll be able to get to it a lot easier. Now one thing I didn't take into consideration was where it's going to cross this bar. I guess if we went on the inside there, oh, there's probably going to be room on the outside. Should be okay. okay. Let's see. Been an uncle for 28 years. <laughs> so yeah, you pick up little words like okay and Christmas. Got a nephew that was saying that for a while. Merry Christmas. Luke. I missed that kid. He moved away to his brother, his brother's house. Him and his wife and a couple kids and staying there. And so he uh, he's been away for a while. Haven't really been able to interact with him at all since he's been gone so that's too bad but that's life isn't it i'm gonna cry everything out all right so that's that obviously this is, has to be tightened up now the next thing i'm gonna go ahead and tighten up these carburetors so one Woo! it's looking good guys looking good Okie dokie. All right, I think we're just about ready to drop her down. Do I have an extra piece, folks? Do I have an extra piece? I'm not seeing an extra piece of wire line. I cut it off the old fuel line. I think I'm gonna face it up, so let's cut this other garbage off. 
Like I said, I keep saying this. I don't have to worry about stuff. Not about you guys, but I want to be able to j enjoy my ride. A little elbow grease in the beginning saves a lot of headache in the end. Give it a little shove up. Like that. And I'll be able to zip tie it. Zippy time. Oh yeah, nice. Eh, it's just a scratch. Yeah, it's that one little scratch right there. Ooh. Folks, we are right there. Then, should we try it? Let's try and lower it down. I had to lift it back up, pull the carbs back, and then put a wire loom around the injection oil tube as well. So, that's done. So I got my trusty little 10 mil here. Tighten these up. I'm gonna make sure it's carbs are opening up all the way. And that the oil injection arm is traveling all the way up. If you're gonna be trail riding regularly, I don't know, man. I mean, I think that the oil injection is just superior because you get more oil at higher RPMs. Just makes sense. But to each their own. A lot of guys do the delete. Okay, so I'm going to look in and see if that pump arm is lined up. I just figured I'd go ahead and show you guys. Well, let me get some light down here first. So that's what I'm doing. Easier if I go in from the top like this. So, yeah, that's it. Tight. All right. Let's try this again. So, carbs are set in. Do a checklist real quick. We got the oil injection cable set. The throttle cable set. Chokes are in. Still set. Good. It's an eighth inch play. We're good there. Now... We can plug some stuff in. So, um, wanted to get one other hose on underneath here. Kind of a. Okay. I was trying to place my hose clamps in the easiest spot to get to them. Let's grab some pliers. Those clamps don't have to be stupid tight. They gotta be snug so that they're gonna put enough pressure so that the hose doesn't pull off or wanna twist off or vibrate off, that's it. And now plugged in. That's not too bad. Yeah, I guess these carbs aren't too bad to get to. These guys are good for grabbing the 
the car boots. good on this side. Just gotta make sure it's good all the way around. <clears throat> yeah, it's just about good. Yeah. All right, guys. Yes, servo. Quite even. One's a little bit longer. Let me get the measurements. Okay. Got the measurement here. We are looking at 1.17 inches. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, so 1.15. So we're a little tight. All right, let's get these adjusted. So 1.17 inches to 1.24. 1.2 is ideal. And 0.2. Last check. So the minimum is 1.7, 1 1.17 inches. The maximum is 1.24 inches. And the ideal is 1.2. So it was like 1.208. Okay, so what I did last time. So I put a zip tie around it. This garage is trying to kill me. Which is what I'm going to do. Zip tie. Just for a little added insurance. That CDI box here, black stator, it's awesome. It's still kind of hard to believe that it's going together. These are internal lock washers. Let's clean up these grounds real quick. Just to make sure there's full contact. Make it nice and shiny. And then to help prevent any corrosion, you can either use, not dielectric grease, because that's an insulator. You can use I don't, uh, graph, was it graphite grease? I don't know, something, um, I can't remember exactly what it's called, but it's got little bits of graphite in it, and it, um, it creates a good, con better connection. Or, You can put grease on it. You can use, uh, they have the stuff that's for battery terminals. 
and it's red. And it uh, you just spray it on there, and it creates a protective film over the connection. So you can do it a couple ways. And we are almost done, folks. It's been a long time. I know it's been a long, long time. Why don't we put these mounting bolts in? So we got the big popo and then a couple of others. Throw a little bit of red Loctite on there. And I'll have to measure the belt distance which is center to center 12.2. So it smells like cherries. You guys think it's looking pretty good so far I like the color scheme for sure it looks good instead of just a boring black engine you know You want it right in between the three sixteenths and the quarter. One point or twelve point two inches. Nice. Pull cord on. Look what we got, folks. Pull cord. Oh, gosh. Serious? Full cord, full or recoils fully rebuilt. Holy crap. Oh, this thing freaking break my arm. Oh, All right, I might have to trim that. But damn, that thing's got some freaking pop. <laughs> All right, guys, she is in.
completely in. I think I hear a heartbeat. Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Ba -boom. <laughs> She's getting ready, folks. That's it. Not bad. So I'm going to put coolant in and then, uh, gosh, I could start this thing today. So, so I'm going to clean up the secondary. Shouldn't need a whole lot. Clean that up. Put that on. Probably do the side panels and, or the belly pans. And I got to get this thing out of here just to... I'm still tempted to get it going tomorrow and then break it in up north. So, all right, I'll be back. All right, guys, so I got it on here. It's torqued down. Fits perfect. Oh my gosh, this thing's got so much compression. Oh. I'm really happy about this. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely going to do the trick. So, all right, that's it. I will uh, update you guys when I get the other clutch on as well and slap the belt on. And then after that, shortly after that, it should be able to fire this thing up. So. All right, guys, so I figured I would show you what I'm dealing with here. So this is the secondary clutch that came off of this sned, this uh, snowmobile, <laughs> the sned, the snowmobile sled. So uh, anyways, it's, uh, unfortunately, I broke this top plate here, and I was able to get a, another one from my boy Keith over at West Michigan Snowmobiles. He sent me uh, a new one, well, not a new one, but he sent me another one of these. Same thing, just needs to uh, have the, the rollers replaced, and luckily the rollers on here are in pretty good condition. So I'm going to go ahead and use those. Um, but yeah, this thing's pretty dirty. It has been sitting in my, my garage here, uh, just dealing with everything that I've been doing in here. So they're both kind of dirty. Uh, they're definitely grimy, but either way, I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean them up with the... I'm going to tear I'm going to tear it down. And just separate the sheaves, and then I'm going to, uh, you know, take the spring out, take the rollers. I'm going to swap the rollers out. Probably end up putting new uh, bolts up here. Just going to clean everything up in general, and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and reassemble it. And I'll show you guys what kind of outcome I have when I'm done. All right. All right. So I got everything taken apart here. We got both of the, uh, they're basically beauty rings here is what I would describe them as. Uh, we got the shims. Um, we got the spring cover here with the rollers that are supposed to go in. I already took the rollers out. That was fun. Um, spring, not too bad a condition, but I just washed that up. But we got both sides here. We got the helix. I'm just going to leave that on there. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how great or how okay this is. I'm gonna clean it up and go from there. Um, there's a little corrosion on it. Um, so we'll see what the soda blast does and we'll go from there. I'll show you when I pull everything out of the parts. So All right, so here's everything polished up. Uh, couldn't really get this stuff polished too much. Uh, it's definitely cleaner. Um, I tried to hit the uh, shaft there as much as I could without getting too crazy. I think there was just a lot of grime on it. We'll see how it functions. Um, there's the new cover. Still got to put the rollers in real quick, and then uh, I'll start putting stuff together, and then I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. All right, so this is the finished product. I ended up having to get... Uh, I just went ahead and got some new rollers. Local shop. It's like 10 minutes, not even. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, it cleaned up for sure. It's not perfect. 
but it's definitely uh, looks a lot better than it was and you know I know that it's uh, functional so that's it looks pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and put this sucker on the sled and I will be right back all right so I'll fill with coolant gas believe everything's good to go we're gonna try and start this beast it's a moment of truth Let's see what happens. We'll put some fuel down on the cylinders. Uh, it's been a long time coming. See what happens. Keys on, choke. Oh, snap.